years, heroin was a back alley drug that nobody much talked about. But today it's invading our communities and many experts call it an epidemic. Now a couple from Muskego is speaking out after losing their son to heroin. Here's Courtney Garrish with more. Courtney. Carol and Mike, a suburban husband and wife are in their own personal hell after losing their son to a heroin overdose. A recent report shows heroin overdose deaths have surpassed cocaine fatalities in Milwaukee. And it's a growing problem across all of southeastern Wisconsin a problem that can be prevented. Too much time to think, too much time to wonder, to dwell, how much worse is hell. Words from his journal, all that Linda has left to remember her son, Tony. All the love I feel for my family comes with so much shame and guilt. Heartbreaking to hear a mother read how her son almost knew he was going to die. I can't hold it in any longer. The drugs will definitely kill me. The Pazinskis had it all, two great sons and a strong family based on love and trust. Tony was the baby. He was a perfect child. Early teenage years, he would still always tell the truth, even to the point where it would get him in trouble. But things started unraveling for Rick and Linda about 15 years ago, when doctors discovered a rare genetic defect in their older son, Canton. It was especially tough on Tony. But he always said he was all right. I don't think he wanted to be a burden. After an 11 year battle with his illness, Canton passed away in 2010 at age 30. Shortly after that, 21 year old Tony admitted to his parents he was addicted to heroin. But I said, it's okay. There's help, we'll get help. Tony's addiction started with painkillers. I never thought he would try heroin. I never thought he, he would get addicted. He was too smart. He was too smart. But, but that has nothing to do with it. David Glick, a substance abuse counselor with Pro Healthcare, says today's heroin is more pure than ever. It's a cheap high, it doesn't cost a lot of money. And they don't realize that the strength of it is massive compared to what it used to be. And Glick warns the face of heroin is changing. It's no longer an urban street drug. It's in the suburbs, it's in schools, it's everywhere. And many addicts are kids. Teenage to you know mid-20s crowd who, again, are very unknowledgeable about what they're doing. Tony knew what he was doing was wrong, and his parents tried to help him, but found it wasn't that easy. Had a lot of trouble finding help here. That's a point I want to make. Mm -hmm. Heroin is, um, we talk about it, there's segments on TV, but people don't like to say that word. Doctors don't want to be heroin doctors. Tony did several stints in rehab, then he would relapse. But he finally got clean in early 2012 and started to piece his life back together. This is Tony two weeks before he passed away. But then one slip and it was all over. Tony died of an overdose in February. He was 23. I never thought in a million years he would overdose and die. Just because he was smart, he, he talked about it, he we were familiar with it. Linda wears these dog tags around her neck as a tribute to her sons. And I wear them all the time. Very precious. They hit me right on my heart. Linda and Rick admit every day is a struggle, but they cherish the memories they have of both sons. And we're still breathing for some reason. Walking um, around and for a purpose. I, I have to believe I have a purpose. And I believe my kids did too. That's why they're speaking out, hoping they can save the life of someone who sees their story. If we start talking about heroin and say it out loud and shout it, and it'll make people hopefully speak about it and say I have a problem. Well, if you or someone you love has a problem with heroin or any substance, tell someone and get help. There's a link on our website to Linda's tribute page to Tony, her son, on Facebook, where people can reach out and find other help sites. And Mike and Carol, I think the common denominator is we need to work together as a community and fight this epidemic and, of course, not be afraid to talk about it. That's the first big step is talking about it. Yeah, it's taken a lot of good people. It has. Sadly. Thanks, Very Courtney. Sad. Thank